guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Noelle and today we are going to talk about the Hoka One One Clifton Edge. If you haven't yet, I do have a first impressions vlog up on this YouTube channel, so do check it out if you want to see what my initial impressions were of this pair of shoes. So yeah, once again, it's the heel that kind of catches your eye because it really does stick out from the back. It's not as extreme to me anymore as it used to be when I first saw it on this shoe, but um, standing still that heel is still pretty noticeable to people who are paying attention. I did think it was a solid shoe for long runs at a steady aerobic pace. So it's it's not really for fast runs, which from the outset, um, the Clifton Edges did not claim to be a very fast shoe, but um, it's, it's more for those steady long days and uh, yeah, this amount of midsole material um, really buffers the body from a lot of impact, especially as your sh sessions get longer. A lot of the previous reviews I've seen about the Clifton Edges did say to look out for the amount of wear that you get on the soles of the shoe, specifically because this entire bottom of the shoe isn't made, it doesn't really have that the rubber that you usually see in the soles of other shoes but it's actually still midsole material so i'm going to flip these shoes over and show you the the dirt pattern and the wear pattern on these clifton edges so right away you're going to see that there's a lot of wear right here on the midfoot of the shoe, especially in the center of the shoe, and I think that's where I impact uh, on the ground or on the pavement a lot. But surprisingly, there's also a lot of wear right here on the medial part of the heel, and it's not dirt. You're going to see that it's not dirt. It's actually really, it's been worn quite flat. And that was really surprising to me because, after all, I have been running in these in just, for just a month. So that's a lot of wear to see on the sole of a shoe. And this is, this is my left shoe. The same wear is also on the right shoe. So yeah, that was pretty striking because I have never seen that much wear on the sole of a shoe in the span of a month before um, and considering the price point of the Clifton Edge and the fact that it's supposed to be a training shoe that you're meant to use quite often uh, these soles are I think they've underperformed now because the stack height is so high even if you wear through even if you wear this entire thing um, smooth i guess you're still gonna have a lot of midsole material to uh, to burn through so i i guess that's why they didn't really protect the sole of the shoe with um let's say a, a blown rubber outsole so i did a comparison run or um i think i was two comparison runs and they were back to back between the Hoka On and the Clifton Edge and the Nike Air Pegasus 37. And uh, I had a few observations. Um, they were very short runs, so I can't really tell you whether or not one pair of shoes protected me from the beating of long runs better than the other shoe. But um, on the feet, there were some noticeable differences. For one, the upper of the Hoka One One Clifton Edge was not as plush as that of the Pegasus. So it didn't have a lot of the internal... I hesitate to call it foam. Um, but yeah, this upper is quite thin compared to the Pegasus. 
which is actually a good thing if the day is really hot so your feet don't turn into miniature swamps because um, all that foam or all that cloth or fabric material absorbs your sweat. Another noticeable difference is that because the Pegasus 37 has this uh, zoom pod in the forefoot, it's really quite noticeable versus the uh, Clifton Edge's more traditional construction. So yeah, this Clifton Edge feels more like a, a standard shoe. Um, it won't suddenly propel you into outer space because of whatever technology is inside these soles. And so it does feel a bit more comforting, uh, more familiar. Um, and if you're coming from a uh, more standard construction kind of shoe, then the Clifton Edge will definitely feel more like home. Um, the material of this uh, upper is uh, also quite thin. It's not really very cushioned. I think the thickest part of this upper is actually the heel counter right here. Everything else is mesh. It's double, double layer mesh with a bit of cushioning just here around the heel cup. And that's what makes it really nice and cool and breezy. As I mentioned, I run in these shoes in the wet and the thickness of the the sole actually help keep a lot of mud or and puddle splashes off the upper of the shoe. So if you'll notice, this doesn't really look that dirty at all. I think it's my right shoe that shows more of the dirt and uh, yeah, but it didn't really get very dirty either. So those were the differences, but there are actually a lot of similarities in the feel between the shoes. For one, it's that I didn't really feel any difference between a 5mm drop and a 10mm drop from heel to toe. I guess it's because I kind of land a little bit towards the midfoot and um, I lift my foot pretty quickly instead of actually towing off and pushing off with the ball of my feet. So yeah, I didn't really feel that rocking motion. What I noticed is that I was able to keep my cadence high um, in these shoes even at slower paces. So the shoe doesn't really feel like it absorbs all your um, energy, all your pace, and then it, it takes some effort to push forward. No, this shoe basically, um, you move your legs, it cushions your fall, cushions your footfalls, but um, it doesn't add nor subtract any energy from the run. So this is 7 ounces, the Pegasus was 8 ounces. On feet, the weight difference didn't really translate. I think it's because they were both pretty relatively thick-soled shoes anyway. So, yeah, for me, um, when shoe soles are thick, they automatically feel a little heavy. And so that's why I didn't really notice a difference. Between those two comparison runs, where I, I split the run, first I ran in the Cliftons, and then I ran in the Pegasus, and then the second run I ran in the Pegasus, and then I ran in the Cliftons. And I noticed that even if the feel underfoot was different because... Um, the Pegasus was more plush and the zoom pod was a bit more bouncy. The paces and the heart rates between these runs basically stayed the same. So if I was running at a certain effort level, um, RPE, rate of perceived exertion, uh, I was basically running at the same pace whether I was wearing the Clifton Edge or the Pegasus. And I was maintaining the same heart rate as well whether I was wearing one shoe or the other. So I wasn't expending different amounts of energy between each shoe. So yeah, uh, the Clifton Edge and the Pegasus 37 probably occupy about the same place in a shoe rotation. Definitely shoe companies have really started to you know, create these specialist and specific pair of shoes for a specific kind of run. And 
the Clifton Edge is your long steady run shoe. So it's the shoe that you're supposed to be putting in a lot of miles on, easy miles, just to build up that aerobic capacity. And then you can start to layer in um, your tempo runs and your race paced runs using um, shoes that might be ha uh, lighter or have thinner soles or have some other kind of technology that springs you off the ground. So overall, I, I like running in these shoes. The biggest disappointment, I guess, for me is that the the outsole is not as durable as I hoped it would be, especially after only 60 kilometers of running. It's very disappointing. But other than that, these shoes perform um, their function, which is to aid you through those long steady miles that you need to build your aerobic capacity so this shoe won't break any prs but definitely you can build that aerobic base so that potentially you can break a pr in a different shoe so thanks for watching guys if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe to this channel if you like this video if it, you found it informative entertaining please do give it a thumbs up and I will see you again next time. Bye!